Welcome to Dental Tuition Lecture Series. In this lecture we are going to discuss on topic Ludwig's angina. Contents we will be covering today are as follows. First one is definition of Ludwig's angina. And then etiology of Ludwig's angina. After that we will be moving towards clinical features. And then towards pathophysiology and lastly we will be covering treatment of Ludwig's angina. Now let's move towards our main topic without any delay. Ludwig's angina can be defined as the diffuse cellulitis involving bilateral submandibular, sublingual and submental space, characterized by its propensity to spread rapidly to surrounding tissues. This definition can be more clear with the explanation with the picture. So, in this picture we can see the cellulitis has spread involving submandibular submental space, and also the sublingual space which is not seen extraorally. Here in this picture 1 represents submental space, 2 and 3 represents submandibular space. Now coming towards the etiology of Ludwig's angina. The most common etiology is odontogenic, which is associated with infection of mandibular second and third molar. Another etiology is iatrogenic which includes the use of contaminated needles while giving anesthesia. Also, the another etiology is traumatic injuries which leads to fracture, and even penetration may result from trauma which will definitely lead to accumulation of the microorganisms in the traumatized area, and hence, leads to infection in that area. As we already discussed what is its etiology let's move towards its clinical features. On general examination, marked pyrexia is seen in patient. Pyrexia is the high fever which occurred here due to increase bacterial load. Another feature includes presence of dysphagia which means patient is having difficulty in swallowing due to the elevation of tongue which is due to accumulation of pus after spread of infection to the sublingual space. Now coming towards another feature, which is hoarseness of voice which is due to edema in pharyngeal wall soft palate and elevation of tongue. Also there will be drooling of saliva from the mouth. Now moving towards the intraoral examination, woody heart swelling in the bilateral submandibular and submental region is found. And there is elevation of tongue even touching the palate. And on intraoral exam we can encounter the trismus in patient. Trismus or reduced mouth opening occurs due to the severe spasm of masticatory muscles. Trismus indicates that the infection has spread into the masticatory muscles. Now coming towards the pathophysiology of Ludwig's angina. We know that Ludwig's angina is the diffuse inflammation of soft tissue, which is not circumscribed, and tends to spread through tissue spaces. Such spread of infection occurs in presence of organisms that produces hyaluronidase and fibrinolysins. And these are the enzymes which breaks down hyaluronic acid and fibrin. Beta hemolytic streptococci being a potent producer of hyaluronidase. It breaks down hyaluronic acid and fibrin leading to diffuse spread of infection to neighboring spaces. This organism is associated with Ludwig's angina. Most cases originate in association with mandibular second and third molar. Because of anatomic relationship of these teeth and bone. As we all know the cross section of mandible. In the gif figure we can appreciate that bone around buccal aspect is thicker than bone on lingual side of the mandible. And we also know that apices of second and third mandibular molar are placed below the mylar hyoid line. Which means that the periapical infection from these teeth can directly spread the infection to the submandibular space. There is no obstacle to stop the infection to reach the submandibular space because of the reason that apices are below the mylar hyoid line where mylar hyoid muscle originates. Then, the infection spreads to the sublingual space on the same side. As we know that, sublingual space is connected to submandibular space via posterior border of mylar hyoid. And this happens through the posterior border of mylar hyoid muscle. And the submental space is involved by the lymphatic spread. Hence, all submandibular, sublingual, and submental spaces are involved, leading to Ludwig's angina which is a life-threatening condition, which we dentists can encounter. We all knew how Ludwig's angina occurs. 
Now let's see how we can treat this severe condition. The treatment begins with the evaluation of patient's airway and inappropriate patency management. Airway compromised due to edema in pharyngeal wall, soft palate and floor of mouth. Intravenous dexamethasone can be given to reduce airway edema in a patient with upper airway obstruction. An emergent cricothyroidotomy should be performed if the patient loses airway before arrival in the operating room. Supportive measures such as fluid resuscitation is commonly needed because patients present with hypovolemia due to lack of oral intake. Initiation of broad-spectrum empiric antibiotic therapy is appropriate which includes penicillin G and metronidazole as appropriate regimen. Blunt dissection is carried out to explore all the involved spaces. Superior steel dissection and debridement are important in the area around source of infection. The intraoral and extraoral dissection is done in submental or submandibular space to freely communicate and allowing for dependent extraoral drainage. The abscess is decompressed and necrotic debris are debrided along with elimination of infection. And the wounds are copiously irrigated with antibiotic irrigating solution and normal saline. So, this ends our lecture video on Ludwig's angina. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel Dental Tuition for the similar lecture videos. Have a good time.